hey hey everybody so i have the rest of the word for you guys um that goes with god has given you a second chance i think is what i named it um where we're speaking about salvation and so I told you guys i'd be back when the lord sends me so this is the rest of the word and just the um revelation he gave me on salvation which is so beautiful you guys um it's, it's truly a beautiful thing to know the truth of God. Like, deception will only get us so far but cost us our eternity. But the truth literally sets us free. And it just makes me think, like, you know, if you're getting ready to take a test, a big test, like, would you want somebody to give you all the wrong answers and then you think they're right and the day of your test you fail? Or would you rather them give you the hard answers and you study and study and study until it becomes what you know and what you memorize naturally and then when that test comes there's no pop quiz on certain things because you've studied everything you needed to know even though it was hard to learn and you're like how does that even make sense to that da, 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 da. but the more you spent time on it and did your research it actually was equivalent to the truth so that's what this is you know hear the truth and accept it and then work on it and let the lord perfect it so anyways um this was given to me tuesday january 23rd 2024 and he gave me this at 3 46 a.m so he gave me this phrase i don't want to call it a phrase but these exact words earlier um in the other video like as soon as we were writing like i mean talking about like what was it um, I know your deeds and stuff like that, like, and as he was getting into, because we were reading from Revelations chapter 2, and what he gave me was just so profound that I, like, wrote it down at the top of my nose, and I said, hold on, God, hold on, because I knew that was a whole nother word on its own, so I was like, hold on, hold on, God, like, let's just get this done, and then we can move on to that, and that's exactly what we did he's so sweet <laughs> and Paige just goes like oh god i can only write down so much but anyway this is what he said and it's so profound yet beautiful because it makes perfect sense and he said this to me he said salvation is not by works but by submission less of you and more of god walk by the spirit Oh, I'm going to read that again because it's so profound that if you're not listening, you will not get it. Salvation is not by works, but by submission. Less of you and more of God walk by the Spirit. And then he told me Galatians 5 and so 16 is where we are. It says, but I say, walk by, walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desires against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. And what I've said before in another video is God said to me, the spirit is him, the flesh is the, the enemy, is the devil. So following the spirit is following his spirit and following your flesh is following Satan. Okay? <laughs> and uh, he was even just showing me like in, in heaven, like how just Satan followed the flesh, right? pride wanting to be like God and that's the very thing that got him kicked out and so 18 says but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the deeds of the flesh are evident which are immorality impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy outburst of anger disputes dissension factions envy drunkenness carousing and things like these which i forewarned you which i forewarned you just as i have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god so what stands out is he says those who practice it 
meaning you you do it like you are in it like uh, it's almost real like ritualistic like you are constantly doing it right and so those who practice these things mean you are <laughs> you got a stronghold in the bondage right there like it, it, it's part of who you are now like your flesh is overpowering and overruling you and so he says those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god meaning if you just happen to get it and you know that it's wrong and you repent and you turn away from it he's not gonna hold your feet to the fire but the thing is, if you know you're doing it wrong, <laughs> what is it, Hebrews 11? If you know that you're doing it, like, and it's wrong, like, now you are, like, willingly, 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 um, like, sinning. Like, you're doing this by yourself. So, let me see. Let me see. Okay, I'm not sure which verse exactly it is, but, or was it Hebrews 10? I'm not sure, but it talks about, like, once you know that it's a sin and continue to do it, like, there's no sacrifice <laughs> that is that can wipe what is this this says okay it says for if we go sinning willingly after receiving the thank you holy spirit for if we go on sinning will willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin for if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin <laughs> so that is actually hebrews 10 in 26 god is so good because <laughs> i was like uh god i can't find it i'm about to i'm about to just go fast <laughs> but anyways here we go and so um but i did see when um i went to hebrews 11 though what i did see was like without face it's impossible to please god and I think that's actually really important. So 11 and what stood out to me there was, and without faith, it's impossible to please to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. <sighs> Meaning you have to even believe his words are true and it is him. And this is powerful. Okay, let me get back here. So 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such thing there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and, des and desires. Meaning if you belong to God, you've crucified the flesh. So all those desires, like you crucified them with, the, with its passions and desires. If we live by the spirit, let us also work by the spirit. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. So those think the flesh is slavery, right? Because the scripture says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. And so we know those things are it's slavery because when you're leading like when the flesh is leading you don't even really have control sometimes like it consumes you you just want to do it so you do it and even though you hear the holy spirit you reject him and you choose what you want anyway and so when god frees you from that through knowledge right because it says through knowledge the just are delivered through knowledge the just are delivered and salvation means delivered right or deliverance and so tie all that it's not always laying on of hands or casting out the demons sometimes it's just by getting the word of god and the revelation and holding on to it and meditating on that day and night okay that also is renewing your mind and being washed in the word of god and so 25 if we live by the spirit let us also walk by the spirit so if you live by it also walk by it 
Like if you live with the Holy Spirit, also allow him to live in you and walk that out. Okay. And then uh, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. That's why he set us free, right? Therefore, keep standing firm. So keep choosing over and over. Stand on what he said and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. And don't go back to your old ways. Stand firm in what you've learned and what you know and continuously choose it. And then he took me to Philippians 2 and then I got 12 and it says walk out. No, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God. And then he said to me, his spirit, who is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasures. And there was also something else he wanted me to say with, um, with Corinthians. So let me actually go to that. Okay, and so even, okay, you guys, this is so good. Help me, Jesus. Okay, so I just read to you 13, for it is good, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasures, meaning God does the work. So work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And then he ended up showing me um, Philippians 1 and 6. And it says, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. And we're talking about God, his Holy Spirit, okay? Will do the work. So when you surrender, God will do it. It is not you. It is him. And this is another thing that um, I wanted to read that the Lord had pointed out to me. So we're going to go back to chapter 2 and verse will start at 6 because I have it highlighted. It says, Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, with God a thing to be grasped? but emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant. This is what God is expecting us to be, a bond servant. And being made in the likeness of men. Okay. And being in the likeness of men, being found in appearance. As a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So listen to that. Jesus was a bondservant and on top of that it says he was obedient. He humbled himself which is what we need to do. It takes humility to crucify the flesh. Tell your friend like it's telling your flesh no. And choose, it's humbling yourself before God and choosing his spirit. So humble himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, even death on a cross. And then he showed me too, like over here where, um, let's see, because so I'm going to go back to chapter one and verse 21 and he says is that where I'm starting okay for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain but if I am to live on in the flesh this will mean fruitful labor for me and I do not know which to choose so it shows you that he is saying like it's it's up to him to choose the flesh that seems fruitful and labor or to live in Christ Okay, so he says, I do not know which to choose because to him, it's like they both sound good. The flesh sounds good to the flesh. <laughs> the spirit sounds good to the spirit, right? And so it says, but I am hard pressed from both directions, meaning oof, 
it's a tough one, right? Having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. So now he's talking, like, you know what? Choosing Christ is much better. And then it says, yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. So he's saying this to the people, like, even though I'm choosing God, it's, it's necessary. Like, it's more necessary, meaning in their own opinion, because of their flesh. You know, it says, yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Then he says, convicted of this. I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress in joy and faith. Meaning he says, I'm going to go ahead and continue this for you. Hold on. My phone. I don't know what that was doing. Okay, but he's saying, but where am I? Okay, so he said, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in your faith. Meaning, I will go ahead and, and choose God for you progress in hopes that you will pick based off of how it turns out for him and what it is that he is gaining and you see that he gains by choosing God, right? So he says, for your progress and joy in the faith. So that you'll be excited to do it right you'll have joy and then it says so uh so that your proud confident in me may abound in christ jesus through my coming to you again then he says only conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of christ so he's saying only conduct yourself yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or remain absent I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel in no way alarmed by your opponent which is a sign of destruction for them but of salvation for you and that too from God, for to you it has been granted for Christ's sakes, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. And so he is saying, like, although your flesh sounds good to you, I am and to him right because he did say i don't know which to, sh to choose he says i'm going to go ahead and choose the right thing so that you would be um you know what what am i trying to say god inspired so that you would be motivated so that you would have faith in what comes with him choosing god and that you would choose him through your own faith so he's letting you know like it's up to you to choose and also what god was showing me which was romans he took me to and we're gonna start on chapter 6 verse 4 and it says therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death so that as christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father so we too might walk in newness of light and that was something god had highlighted to me in my bible so it literally says like it's highlighted might because he was saying like might jesus did all of this so that you might walk in newness of life because whether you say i give my life to you lord whatever whatever you it, like it doesn't take away your um your free will like at any chance you can change your mind you can go another way which is why in romans 2 and 2 right as we were reading he was saying go back to your first love you've done all this good you've done all this but you have forsaken your first love which was jesus the reason why you did it was because of your love for god and so now chapter i mean verse 5 says or if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Meaning you dying to yourself, your old self, right? Because we come into this world as children of disobedience. So you're dying to your flesh to live in the spirit, to live in Jesus Christ, right? And so it says, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might, yeah, let me have like that again, be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. Eight, now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. 
and then he took me to even so consider yourself to be dead to sin but alive to god in christ jesus therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lust and do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Then what? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? May it never be. So now he's saying, just because God gave you grace now, right, through Jesus Christ, right, just because he gave you grace does not mean now you get to sin, now you get to do whatever you want. Doesn't mean you get to go back to the world and be like, I'm still going to heaven, I talk to God every now and then, da, 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 da. He's saying no, but present yourself to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Meaning, yeah, like a sacrifice, you, a living sacrifice unto God. So, put to dead the old things. And then he says, like he said, he says, then what? Because it says for, um, it says for sin shall not be master over you for you are not under law, but under grace. Then what shall we sin? Because we are not under law, but under grace. And this is his response. May it never be, may it never be. Do you not know that when you present yourself to someone as slaves, do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? Okay, you guys, so this is important because it lets us know that there's only two masters, not your balls. <laughs> not, 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 nobody. The master is who you are a slave to is either God or Satan. Sin is Satan, right? And righteousness is God. So he's letting us know right now, Paul, he's letting us know that either we are slaves to obedience or slaves to sin, right? Slaves to, well, he says we're obedient either way. So it's just either slaves to uh, sin, which will result in death, or obedience resulting in righteousness. Okay, but either way, it's either the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. Satan's kingdom or a God's kingdom that you are um, obeying, right? And your fruits will show because <laughs> the sin will, you know, the wages of sin is death. And righteousness is in obedience unto God. And so that just shows you right there either you're obeying god or you're obeying satan but your fruits will show because the fruit right from earlier when we were reading it's the flesh and all those things are the things of sinning impurity all these things and then when we talk about the things of god and the spirit of god it's love patience right it's it well you know it's it's a whole different 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 thing um and so let me even see if I could go to it real fast. Right? So yeah, love, patience, kindness, all those things in Galatians chapter 5. Anyways, so it showed us the difference. When you follow the flesh, those are what that is. When you follow the leading of God, that is what those things are. And so now... Here we go. We're going to go to 17. But thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, right? Because we're born into disobedience, right? So we're all here into sin when we are first put here. So it says, but thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you became obedient from the heart to that form of teaching to which you were committed, so he's saying, but thanks be to God that though you were sin, slaves of sin, and you were obedient 
from the heart to that form of teaching to which you were committed he said and having been freed from sin right you became slaves of righteousness so now even just with the new teaching once you commit yourselves to it right you have been freed from sin you became slaves of righteousness so slaves of god instead of slaves of satan you are slaves of god so for all of you who are like oh this book is for slaves and that listen regardless if you believe the word of god or not you are still a slave to something and i've said that in other videos of mine as well and so here we go so now um and slaves of righteousness 19 i am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh for just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness resulting in further lawlessness so he's saying for just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity, so to the flesh, to sin, it only takes you further into lawlessness, meaning it only takes you further away from God. It does not draw you to him, to the big G God, but it draws you to the lowercase g god which is satan right he is a creation of god he is not god himself he is a lowercase g god okay he is not supreme he is not sovereign he is none of that he is below and so now it says so now present your members so now that you know the truth right now present your members as slaves to righteousness resulting in sanctification so to know that you are really in the will of god and you are committed and belonging to jesus christ right because it says you're crucified to your flesh and your passions and desires so what is saying now is once you are following the steps which are in the Bible, it's not my steps, it's biblical. So once you are clean, right, your fruit of the result will be you'll be sanctified, you'll be pure, you'll be holy, you'll be righteousness through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, right? So you will be in one with God, in one with Jesus. You will be the cleaner back to the image that God has originally and initially made you in the garden, at the beginning when he puts you in the womb of your mother right <laughs> what is it joshua um and yeah so joshua right one five so just in in that like <laughs> you will be back to your original state uh, state before satan got to you okay and so before sin took over your life because god's kingdom has a certain image which is holiness righteousness all those things i've said and all the things we've read and satan's kingdom has an image and we've already talked about those as well you know and so now he's saying your um whatever you're committed to it says will result in those things so sinning will result in further lawlessness and being righteous will result in sanctification you being set aside for god and so 20 says for when you were slaves of sin you were free in regard to righteousness therefore what benefit were you then deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed for the outcome of those things is death mm, deriving mm, therefore Therefore, what benefit were you then deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the outcome of those things is death. 22. But now, having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive from benefits resulting in sanctification. Mm, now you being free from that, you're driving from, you're driving from hmm. but now having been freed from sin and you enslaved to God you derive your benefits resulting in sanctification and the outcome eternal life so you're resulting in this so being freed and enslaving yourself to god and not to satan no longer your results will be sanctification it'll be resulting in sanctification in your purity and the outcome eternal life for the wages of sin is death 
but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you guys, also one thing to know is that the reason why the gift, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life. Because Jesus already died on the cross for us. He made it easy for us so we don't have to make these certain types of sacrifices like they did in the Old Testament with animals and all these things, right? And so now Jesus did the highest pay and he bought us with the blood. So we're free from those things of, of the world. Now we have to do the work because sanctification will be your result, your cleanliness, the cleanness of you will be the result of, of if you are serving God, the true living God or the lowercase g God of this world world and so you have to ask yourself do you really serve god or do you just say that because to serve god is to be committed to him you know just like if you are in a relationship you know you study the your partner you know the things they like you know what what they've been planning for like you know them like you know the back of your hand but can you say that about god do you know god do you know what pleases him and do you do those things that please that please him like the things like how we would go above and beyond for our partner are we willing to do that when god is our husband and we are the bride are we willing to give to him what we would give to another person who we say we love? Would we be out here blatantly disrespecting our loved one, the person that we love? Would, if we were around people and they were dogging our, our spouse, would we just let them or would we stand up for them? Because God requires the same thing. God is more than our spouse. Like he is more than that. He is our father. He's our lover. He's our friend, right? He's our provider. He is everything, the breath. Like we don't have to tell God, like God don't, you know, like before you go to bed, like God, like don't let me forget to breathe. Like don't forget to make me breathe in the morning. Don't forget to check my heart and make sure everything's okay. Like he naturally does those things because he is love. And that is love. Just like him correct us and slapping our hand like before a child is going to touch a hot pot when their parent is cooking and is boiling and they just stop don't do that don't go there no baby and you move their hand and then what the baby starts crying but it's for their safety and god does the same thing before you decide to go down that wrong way or do that wrong thing or something that would cost you your eternity like god is more concerned about our soul than anything else than anything else god will not let you be rich and famous and all these things if he knows it will cost you your soul he would rather you be in a local church scrubbing the floor but at church every sunday and speaking to people you see on the street and being a blessing because he cares more about your soul than your popularity than your title the name tag then who knows you like he doesn't care about those things at the end of the day god's not gonna sit here on judgment day and say to us how many people know your name what are your accolades because it's not the accolades that get us into heaven but it's our humbleness it's our humility to god it's our relationship with god it's our surrender to god it's our commitment to god would you fight for god if somebody was offering you like if satan was offering you the world would you sit here and say no i would rather not get paid and figure something out afterwards and not sign that contract or do this and that because i want god more than i want anything more than i want my name known more than i want that opportunity more than i want this more than i want that child like more than anything like because god has to be more like God has to be at the top. He is knocking down all these idols and we should be grateful because he's saving our lives. God is a lover of our soul, of our mind, of our mind, our will and our emotion. The enemy th would love to have your mind, your will and your emotion. And then like in the verse over here like in isaiah which you guys this is crazy because it's like if you really think that satan cares about you listen to what the lord said listen to this bible isaiah 14 uh chapter 14 verses 9 through i'm gonna stop at 10 listen to this it says shiloh from beneath is excited over you 
is excited over you. This is why the enemy wants you to sin so bad and be blind to the truth. Because listen, Shiloh from beneath is excited over you. Mm. Shiloh from beneath is excited over you to meet you when you come. It arouses for you the spirits of the dead, all the leaders of the earth. It raises all the kings of the nations from their throne. They will all respond and say to you, even you have been made weak as we. Mm. Even you have become made weak as we. You have become like us. So you've fallen from the glory of God, right? You have fallen from grace like Satan had fell from grace. As Jesus said, I watched him fall like lightning from the sky. Like <laughs> when it gets to the point of when the enemy can say to you and you're made in the image of God, right? Satan is jealous of us and hates us because we are everything he wished he could be. We're made in the image of God. He's not. He wanted to be God and God gave us authority and powers and certain gifts that glorify him. Satan hates us, <laughs> okay? And it says Shiloh from beneath and Shiloh is hell if you don't know. From beneath is excited over you to meet you when you come. It arouses for you the spirits of the dead, all the leaders of the earth. It arises all the kingdoms of the nation from their thrones they will all respond and say to you even you have been made weak as we you have become like us when the enemy can say that you've definitely 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 made the biggest mistake the biggest mistake to where he can actually get you to be equal to him mm. and he despises God Mm -mm -mm -mm. and listen to this it raises all the all the kings of the nation from their throne and this is just it blows my mind because like oh, like <laughs> like the enemy is such a copycat of god like you know how god has so much like around like this creatures he created around his thrones and all these things and all these elders like and it's like he does the same things he's raised his own kings and nations on their thrones in his kingdom which are higher ranking level of demons of course but you guys Satan loves to watch you fall so he can torture you because he, you're everything he's not. And he would love for us to not be sensitive to sin so he can manipulate us and do whatever he likes so he can torture us in hell when that time comes. And so choose who it is that you want to serve and be committed. God says it like you're either hot or cold lukewarm it's cold like he will vomit you out there's no love no respect there he's like you're not <laughs> jesus says if you're not gathering you're scattering <laughs> like <laughs> like you're you're an enemy like there, there's a problem here and so just ask yourself and read the word for yourself. I read the Bible. I ain't tell you nothing that ain't in there. And so this message is to save your soul. This message is the love of God because he wants you to get it right. He doesn't want you to be blindsided and manipulated like the enemy wants, right? He'll tell us a whole bunch of truth, a little bit of lies, and then it ruins everything. Because if you put a little bit of poison in something, you're still gonna die. So you're still gonna be sick like something's still gonna happen and so let's be let's be real you know which is why back in the day like so that the king wouldn't be poisoned they would have somebody come and taste the the drink to make sure that it's not poisonous and <laughs> And, and that's funny because the king, right? And if we're in the image of God, we have high value, high value. And it's not in the hands of people, but it's in the simple fact that Jesus died on the cross. That's where our worth comes from. Jesus dying on the cross for our sins because he loves us. It's not in how many followers, likes, or any of that we get. How many friends, it's none of that. It's all about what Jesus did for you. And Satan didn't die for you. He wants you to die for him so you can suffer with him. And that is in eternity in hell 
where Jesus wants you to pick up your cross and follow him and suffer with him so you can reign with him, you can glory with him. What is suffering going against the kingdom of darkness? Because it's a war. So you're going to have to suffer and go through things because it's a war. <laughs> You're going to suffer with somebody, and but guess what? Only one's going to let you reign with them and glory with them, while the other just wants to bully you and destroy you. Anyways, you guys, have a beautiful and blessed day. I pray this brought so much clarity to you guys. I pray it sets you free. I pray this video makes it to everybody that the Lord wants to see it and get the understanding and the clarity because he gave me this word for you guys and he gave me more as well. And so I guess we're going to be doing a bit of a little Bible study, I guess. I don't know for how long, but he gave me other scriptures and stuff he wants me to go over with you guys. And so welcome to all my new as subscribers thanks for joining the family i love and appreciate each and every one of you guys and i am blessed and honored to be able to teach you guys and be used by god for his glory um but this channel is only god's alone and to bring him the glory and uh, and showcase his love and he loves you all very 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 much all right you guys have a beautiful and blessed day bye bye